Plus Love MMA fans, have I got a big treat for you. Joining me today is the gorgeous, classy, and always very interesting Amber Nicole Miller. How are you today, girl? I'm awesome. How are you? I'm good. All right. We're about a week away, maybe less than a week away from the big Ortiz fight. How is things? How are things going in the house over there? They're really calm, actually. Um, it's nice to see Tito in this place mentally and physically, emotionally. I mean, he really has done the work, and now he's sort of just calm, and it's nice. You know, I, the other day he was just laying there, and he was like, babe, I don't know what it is, but I'm just, everything just feels happy. He's like, I genuinely, like, am so content and so happy. He's like, it's, it's just this, like, huge relief off of his, off of his heart. It's pretty How personal cool. is this fight for Tito, though? The fight now, at this point, I don't think that it's a big deal to him emotionally where the friendship came into play before. Um, I think that over the years, we've run into Chuck multiple times at different charities, and it's just estranged. You know, he acts like he doesn't know Tito. He's sort of kind of... Yeah, you know, standoffish. He, so it's it's unfortunate. I mean, we've even gone to events where he has his kids, and you know, I'm always one of those people who's like, hey, you know, saying hi to the littles and wanting to kind of be a part of it, and and I feel like he, I don't know if he's jealous of Tito, and that's why he kind of acts like he doesn't know him, or that he genuinely doesn't like him, which is really, you know, it's kind of sad to kind of harbor that kind. Of, resentment towards somebody so it's too bad because they're both legends of the sport both icons in their own right both deserve respect but you know sometimes egos come can come into play we've seen it happen you were you've been involved in mma for a long time so but i'm looking forward to the fight i'll be coming out there to watch <laughs> watch the gang i'm sure oh my gosh well and you know it's funny is that uh, you know you have all these mma fans and you know they're poking fun and saying that they're mm -hmm. old and they're past their prime and who's gonna watch them like if you're an MMA fan, right. you're going to be watching, or else you're not really an MMA fan. Agreed. Do you ever get nervous watching him? I don't get nervous once he's in the cage. Okay. Like, the buildup for when he's, like, cutting weight and he's, mm -hmm. like, away from home. Because he goes to his hotel room, like, around Tuesday morning. And then he is there by himself sort of getting mentally mm -hmm. prepared and doing the weight cut and, you know, just... His focus is solely on the fight. And when I get to the hotel, like at weigh-in time, it's nerve-wracking just to see him depleted and and feeling like, you know, death. When you're doing a weight cut like that, any weight cut, you just don't feel good. And once he's back to himself again and he's eaten, I see that he's ready. And that's when my nerves are like, okay, we're good again. Like, let's go back. We're ready. We're set. Like, yeah, it's easy. <laughs> You mentioned this time, or maybe it's not just this time, maybe it's more so this time, that Tito's mindset is much calmer. Why do you feel it's different this time than from the, some of the other fights? Well, I think that he, I mean, it really it comes with age. I believe that, <laughs> you know, you, you go through a lot of, like, peaks and valleys throughout your career and throughout your life, and we have such a calm home. You know, our boys are you know, great, they're going to school, that we just have a constant calmness. You know, we have our schedules and we have our routine, but there's no drama. There's no yeah, extra important. anything in the house. I mean, really, like, we have the most normal laid-back lifestyle. <laughs> so I think, you know, it comes with age and, and the amount that we spend at home with the boys and the yes. amount that we spend with each other just being together. Speaking of the boys, one of the questions I have on my list to ask you is about that adorable Halloween photo. So one of them <laughs> wants to be a manager and one wants to be a fighter. Is that right? Yeah. So Journey obviously looks just like Tito. He's his little replica and in every way, emotionally, you know, stubbornness, like he's the emotional tough guy, but he's such, such a little lover. And he wants to do anything that's like physical. He's like, okay, I'm going to be a UFC fighter or I want to be a WWE wrestler. Like he's so into like physicality of like everything. Whereas Jesse's like our, our thinker. He's, you know, 10 steps ahead. He's always kind of negotiating what's going on. Okay. And when I asked him, I was like, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? Because this was, um, it was actually, uh, what do you want to be when you grow up? Because it was during um, drug free week. 
and they were promoting that you can be anything you dream of mm -hmm. as long as you stay off drugs. And I thought that was such a cool concept and such a good way to attach a positive message to making sure, you know, if you do drugs, you might not be able to follow your dreams. Yeah. And I thought that was a really cool thing. And uh, Jesse was like, I don't really know. Sometimes I want to be a baseball player. And, Aww. you know, sometimes I just, you know, want to run a company. And I was like, dude, you could be the boss of whatever you want. Like, what what do you want to do? And I was like, you could you could be like Uncle George, Tito's uh, um, lawyer and one of his best friends. And he also is his partner in Primetime 360. He's like, you know, you could be like Uncle George and you could be like managing fighters. And he's like, okay, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> they're so cute. How old are they now? They're nine, which is crazy. I'm like, they're going to be 10 next March already. It's just insane. What do you think it takes? I mean, Tito is a good parent and I, I think it's uh, uh, so honorable that you're raising them together and doing such a good job. But maybe for other people who have a blended uh, relationship, so to speak, what advice can you give to other people to make the family work? Because you really guys have really done a good job. We know all about Tito's issues in the past. We're not going to get into them, not interested in that. But Tito came from a very difficult background and was able to rise above it, which is one of the things that I think him makes him the people's champ and makes so many people love his hero, hero story, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree. I I was raised this way. I, okay. you know, I, as a little kid, my parents split up when I was two. I never knew them as a couple. So really it was not different to me. It wasn't, mm. it wasn't anything strange. I had step parents and they were basically my mom or my dad at that house. So it really, my parents made it really, you know, positive message. It's just more people to love. It's just more people who love you. And it's just more family. And mm. there was never a, step or half or you know or a, whatever they don't have names like that in my family like we don't say oh my stepmom I say my you know my mom Jenny I just say that because I don't want to put a stigma or a, or a half or make that person less than it that's what I really taught the boys is I was like you love everyone you know the people in your family are just extra people that love you mm -hmm. and you know with Tito not having anybody to teach him how to yes. be a family man and teach him how to, you know, really buckle down and do the work and, and be present. That was really difficult for him because, you know, he was never shown that. And even in his former relationship, they were both the same. They weren't, you know, they didn't have that family background where it's really important to me. I talk to my mom weekly. I talk to my dad. I talk to my grandma. I talk to my sisters and brothers. I'm always constant contact with all of them because, you know, you it's you could lose that time if you, you don't. Can. So good, I, uh, good advice. It's, it's an easy. It was an easy blend. I mean, really, for people, I think that you know they take the stigma away from, yeah. oh, you know, you're the step or the whatever. It it wipes that away, and you just are open for love. Mm -hmm. Good advice. But yeah. you're always so positive anyway. That's why we love you. <laughs> By the way, we're going to get to some great interview questions about you. Now, you have a new collaboration with Cat Levy Diamond Company. Let's talk yes. a little bit about that. Well, I uh, met Cat Levy through a PR company called Now. And Cat Levy is just amazing. She's such a sweetheart. She gets all of her diamonds. They're all resourced from California in L.A. Oh. So the price point is insane, and that's why I was like, what a great match, because I'm like, I don't want to break people's pocketbook, but I also want them to get beautiful pieces that really are meaningful to me. And, you know, I chose the arrow design because I'm a Sagittarius, so it started there. But I also just love the symbol of an arrow. It's always moving forward. It's a positive movement, you know, wherever you came from, you know, like Tito. He came from a horrible background yeah. and look what he's done moving forward. And and that's the motion I get from, you know, my arrow and, and just being, being a Sagittarius. They're, you know, a lover and they're driven and they're always looking towards the future. And that was that was where I got my design from. How hands are you on with the designs? Because you have four pieces of yeah. jewelry at the present time. Well, I was extremely hands-on, especially with the men's pieces. And a lot of that has to do with Tito, obviously. And I'm always looking for gifts for him. And primarily, my followers are all men. And this is because of MMA, which I'm thankful for. So it's really hard for me to kind of work my designs towards women primarily. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted to pick pieces that would be attractive to men. You know, I don't know a lot of men who wear bracelets and rings and necklaces. I just don't know men like that. I know men like Tito that are like 
big mm-hmm. and will wear a big bulky watch right. and you know wear cufflinks when he's dressed up. So when I did the watch design with mm-hmm. um, Kat, she was like, we could do bezel and just diamond it out and do crazy, but you have to send me the watch first before it was finished and sort of it changes the integrity of the watch. And mm-hmm. I really wasn't interested in doing something like that. And I thought, since Tito is a partner with Rockwell, what better way to do a little addition where it can clip onto the link and he can interchange it with all of his watches. It'll have my little arrow and it can either be in a brushed or a, um, or a shiny metal. And then it's, you know, it's got the diamonds throughout the uh, arrow. And I thought it was such a great idea and you can get it in gold or you can get it in silver. And I just thought it was a great addition to a watch and they can actually make it for any watch. Wow, and that's cool. With the cufflinks, um, currently I'm showing them with just an enamel. That's you can okay. also get diamonds put into uh, into the cufflinks if you like. Wow. Any yeah. thoughts about any other pieces that you'll be working on in the future with this designer, Kat Levy, and yourself? Uh, well, I really love, I mean, I'm really all about dainty pieces. And right now I have like a women's um, bangle that's really soft and delicate. Um, it's, a, it's very bendable. Um, it can fit any size wrist. And then a beautiful little dainty... Um, necklace and I'd eventually like to do really just a really pretty uh, ring as well mm. I just like to keep things soft and simple you know eventually we might do like a bracelet for guys I just I don't know if I'm going to just because I really don't know a lot of guys who wear bracelets but I know there's a lot of them out there mm. so you know I'll, I'll see how people kind of respond to what I've got so far most importantly where can we find the items um, well you can find it in the link in my bio on my Instagram which is Amber Nicole Miller uh, also, you can, you can just go to catlevy.com and uh, you can find it there. And Cat Levy, I think, also has an Instagram, doesn't she as well? She does, yeah. Cat Levy Diamonds uh, is her Instagram. All right. Microblading. I love it. I'm a fan yeah. of it. Talk to me a little bit about it. Well, it's funny. It was, again, one of those things that I don't do a lot of extra things because I've got a lot on my plate already with the littles. Uh, but I was just really driven to the idea of microblading. My sister just had started doing it. It was oddly, like opened a brand new one right above my nail salon and just felt like I kept getting these little like pushes, like you should do this and you should look into this. And you know, my mom's had breast cancer. One of my best friends had breast cancer and going through chemo and loss of hair and loss of eyebrows. It's a lot for a woman. And I think that eyebrows really are the frame of the face. I don't have an issue with that because I have giant eyebrows, but I feel like when you have lack thereof, it is a huge difference. You know, I've seen before and afters and I've seen women even going through chemo and and growing back their hair finally, and they can put a wig on, but they're still drawing a full eyebrow on and they're still waking up and seeing nothing there. And this is what I wanted to do when I got with Fox microblading I really wanted to be like an apprentice with them and work closely with them to really draw more attention to what they can offer and how can change someone's life. They actually have a mobile unit that we're looking into getting so that I can drive out to women who, you know, don't have the strength, quite frankly, to come and get their eyebrows microbladed and bring it to them. And I would love to just, that's my passion right now is I want to, I want to make them feel confident again. I want them to wake up and and feel that they're beautiful and not be worried about having to put on makeup every day to feel like confident when they walk out their door. It's so important because so much of women's self-esteem is wrapped up into what they look like. And for a cancer survivor, it can be so debilitating looking at yourself in the mirror besides your hair loss, but your eyebrows and other issues, your weight loss. So that's such a great idea for all the people to bring awareness to microblading, not as just a cosmetic beauty treatment, but it's really an opportunity for women who are going through struggles to actually, you know, look better. And speaking of that, we also, you mentioned to me in our pre-interview, you were thinking about doing a reality show with cancer survivors. So we got to talk about that. Yes. So I really wanted to pitch the idea. Actually, my um, teacher at Fox, uh, her name is Maritza, and she actually teaches Um, areolas as well which is another like huge difference where if you had a mastectomy and you didn't get the nipple back to again you know that's so much of your femininity that's so much of Mm -hmm. something that you're used to seeing and it makes you feel beautiful again it's just small things that people really don't think about 
how they go through all of these these details and something I would love to bring to these women and really make it my calling. And I, you know, we were talking and I was like, why don't I try to, you know, look out, reach out to try to get this to be almost like a reality show where I'm reaching out to these centers that have women who have had, you know, breast cancer or, you know, are cancer survivors and say, I will bring this unit to them and, you know, we'll give them a day of beauty and we'll, we'll bring that confidence back. We'll bring that you know, you wake up in the morning and you can you can feel beautiful without a whole bunch of stuff that you have to do for yourself because you don't have the energy and you're tired and, right. you know, you're burned out from whatever treatments you're going through. So, mm. you know, that's that's another another thing that I'm again, you know, it's just a passion and, and it's not to exploit these women and people might think, oh, well, if you do a reality show, you're going to be exploiting them. I don't want that. I want people to understand yeah. what can be done, you know, outside of the chemos and the therapies and all of these mm-hmm. things and, and the makeup and, you know, covering up all of these things. I want them to feel beautiful again. And I don't want them to have to get a whole tattoo over their chest. Like, how can I, you know, help them with those small details? I applaud you for that. That's so courageous and brave for you to make your platform about that. Because as a very attractive person, as a model, as somebody that is beautiful, you're not only beautiful inside, but you're beautiful outside, which I think adds to the platform. Because to tell you the truth, I think microblading and some of the other things you've been talking about, I always thought of them as a cosmetic thing, something to save time for busy, crazy television people. But to bring awareness to that is really, really great. So I do applaud you for that. Before we go today, anything else you want to add? And don't forget to give us all your social media handles. Um, I mean, really, besides being excited about Tito's fight, I mean, if if you guys are as excited as I am, it's going to be an intense fight, and I'm super excited. Other than that, you know, you guys have, have kind of seen a little bit of what I've been working on really hard and, and what I put my heart behind because, you know, I want things to be meaningful, and I... Mm. I don't want it to be superficial. You know, you can be an influencer on Instagram, but what are you influencing exactly? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, okay, I'm influencing that I'm wearing a garment that's inexpensive and it looks Mm -hmm. cute. That's great. You know, I'm helping out the average woman who's like, I don't want to spend $300 on an outfit, but I'm not really impacting anyone. And that's where I want to move forward, especially with the jewelry designs and especially with, you know, the microblading. I think that a lot of people will be moved and, and really influenced yeah. in a positive way. We're Nicole Miller, always a pleasure. Such a great opportunity to speak with you again. I look forward to seeing you at Tito's fight next week. I'll be there, but yeah. just as a fan, everybody. And you can <laughs> catch that fight Saturday, November 24th on pay-per-view, you guys. If you're in the Inglewood, California era by the forum, you better check it out. There's, think, maybe by next week there won't be any tickets left, but you could try right. probably find some if you really try hard. Amber Nicole Miller, thank you again so much. Thank you so much.